The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency George Mane Ware, President of the Republic of Liberia. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency George Mane Ware, President of the Republic of Liberia, and invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency. Your Excellency Denis Francois, President of the 78th United Nations General Assembly, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Ambassadors, Heads of Delegation, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. Let me begin by extending sympathy to all nations experiencing loss of lives due to recent natural disaster. May the souls of all the faithful departed rest in perfect peace. I'm honored to address this 78th sessions of the United Nations General Assembly on behalf of the government and people of the Republic of Liberia. I congratulate His Excellency Mr. Dennis Francis on his elections as President of the 78th Sections of the United Nations General Assembly, trusting that he will bring his word of experience to bear on the works of this August Assembly. I wish to assure him of my delegation's full support as he still the works of, his, of this assembly successfully in fulfillment of the expectation and confident repose in him. Let me use the occasion to congratulate your predecessor, His Excellency Saba Korosi, for the capable manner in which he administered the affairs of the 77th session of this General Assembly. Let me also commend His Excellency, Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, Secretary General of the United Nations, for the astute manner in which he continues to administer the affairs of the United Nations in these difficult and challenging times. His foresight, commitment, and dedication have kept the United Nations firmly on course. Mr. President, Excellency, distinguished delegates, we have convened at a time when the world is faced with many challenges, security, social, economic, political, and natural disaster. We must exert our collective efforts to confront these challenges with a view of resolving them in order to have a safer, secure, and prosperous future. We must continue to promote global solidarity and rebuild trust in accelerating progress on the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. The SDGs, by design, require bilateral and multilateral collaborations to achieve the result we seek. The theme of this year's debate, rebuilding trust, reuniting global solidarity, accelerating actions on the 2020 agenda and its SDGs towards peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all, adequately captured our current global demands. There is a critical need to ensure that development assistance is aligned with SDG projects that is why my delegation welcomes and supports the Secretary General Agenda for actions to accelerate 
the implementation of existing agreements, including the Sustainable Development Goals, and to re-embrace global solidarity and find new ways to work together for the common good of mankind. As the world deals with unprecedented global political and security challenges, there are growing concerns about the uh, proliferations of non-state armed actors, threats of nuclear escalations, and extreme climate conditions. These challenges continue to serve as obstacles to our quest for a safe and peaceful world. Reaching the 2030 vision is to ensure that the journey is secure through accountability and mutual understanding. Liberia is committed to the 2030 agenda and the sustainable development goals, the SDGs. They are in line with our flagship national development plan, the Propo Agenda for Prosperity and Development which represents our resolve to achieve peace and prosperity while addressing the structural impediments to economic growth and national development. Mr. President, the slowdown in global economic growth continues to be a challenge over the past 12 months. Liberia has made progress in areas ranging from health to education, gender equality, and infrastructure development. We are proud of our achievements in reducing maternal mortality rates, increasing gender parity in school enrollment, and elevating our overall health and well-being. Liberia appreciates the fact that this August body has once again directed its attention to issues of global health, as demonstrated by the number of high-level meetings to keep these critical issues on our collective agenda. Mr. President, we emphasize the unity of purpose as we address challenges aimed are providing business services to all peoples. Considering that more than 60% of Liberia's population comprises of youth, the future of our nation rests on their shoulder. Understanding this immense responsibility, we are committed to continue paving the way for their growth and development. Being concerned that structural transformation drives prosperity, we are focused on infrastructure development with roads and energy playing a critical part. Thanks to the support of our many partners, we remain unwavering in our commitment to explore means to further the implementations of the Sustainable Development Goals as it represents the roadmap towards prosperity. I support Secretary General Antonio Gotara proposed SDG stimulus plan and call for the actualizations of the $500 billion per year in order to boost sustainable development for developing countries through tackling the high cost of debt and rising risk of debt, distress scaling up of affordable long-term financing for development and expanding contingency financing to countries in need. Mr. President, Liberia profoundly appreciates the continued engagement and support from the United Nations system in consolidating aid peace and seeking to address emerging challenges. Liberia will continue to cooperate and collaborate with the United Nations as it continues to rebuild and strengthen its institution and infrastructure. Five years ago, on the occasion of my first address to this August Assembly, we informed you of a peaceful democratic transition 
that had just taken place in Liberia. With your support and that of our friends, we have kept the democratic torch burning. We have maintained peace and security. We have protected human rights and the rights of the media to operate peacefully and freely. The Liberian people have enjoyed the full exercise of their constitutional rights. The country is well on course of consolidating its democratic credentials. I'm pleased to inform you again that in a few weeks, Liberia will go to the polls in keeping with the Liberian constitution to vote in our scheduled presidential and legislative elections. The October polls will mark the fourth peaceful general elections in Liberia since the end of the Civil War in 2003. This 78th session is taking place at the time when my country is preparing for the first election since the withdrawal of the UN peacekeeping present from Liberia. The October 10 election is an opportunity to sustain the gains made in our reconstruction and development processes. Mr. President, Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the government of Liberia has taken all necessary measures to ensure a free, fair, transparent, peaceful, inclusive, and credible elections. The National Election Commission has been strengthening to ensure that it operates with our undue influence. In addition, political parties have committed themselves to a non-violent electoral process by signing the 2023 Farmington River Declaration, which obligates all actors in the elections to continue to promote peace. As a strong believer in democracy, let me reiterate my call for the respect of constitutional governance and respect for the will of the people. While addressing the issues of elections and democracy, permit me to congratulate all democratically elected leaders around the world. Mr. President, our war is also on a threat for natural calamities as seen with extreme climate conditions globally. It is therefore our collective responsibility to urgently prioritize addressing the climate crisis as we strive to reach a target of 64% reduction in carbon emissions. There remains a need to prioritize support to countries, including Liberia, that have the capacity to use aid biodiversity in building resilience against the changing climate. The United Nations has always been confronted with challenges and has withstood the test of time. Hence, this too will come to pass. I wish to thank the Secretary General for his new agenda for peace. Liberia is in solidarity with these bold steps needed to address the triple crisis of disruption, biodiversity loss, and pollution destroying our planet. Liberia is hopeful that concrete global actions toward the attainment of the goals of the common agenda will be achieved. Liberia's journey is best captured in the spirit of unity, resilience, and ambition. Together, through collaborations and shared purpose, we can and must shape a world that uphold the rights and dignity of every individual. In alliance with our United Nations family, Liberia remains resolute in its commitment. We pledge to protect our planet, promote peace, and prevent conflict. We vow to ensure sustainable financing and amplify our partnership, 
reflecting our shared determination for a brighter future. We must also accept that this can only be achieved through collaboration between and among governments, non-government stakeholders, and other partners, which will guarantee transparency, accountability, good governance, and the inclusion of all citizens in the decision-making process. Mr. President, Excellency, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, let us remind ourselves that our collective strength lies in unity. Together, we can overcome any challenge, rebuild trust, promote peace, religious tolerance, uphold tenets of democracy, the rule of law, support women participation, encourage diplomacy, and strengthen global solidarity. I thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Liberia for, his, for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.